So, I'm here with Aris, uh, Aristoteles Vasilakos, is that Yeah, right? that's yeah. correct. Yeah. All right, uh, of Kuno Simulazioni. And that's correct too. And um, we're, we're quickly going to talk a little bit about physics, right? right. So, um, you recently introduced the new tire model to ACC, yeah. the five-point yeah. well, tire patch yeah. model. If, if I may be specific about the tire model, um, I, was, I was wondering, because we were discussing also on my stream that uh, the, the, the issue of uh, skipping those sausage curves sometimes, yeah. right? Um, and I was doing my calculations, but the, the one ingredient I was missing was basically the, the length of the tire patch. I mean, I guess the width is basically the width of the tire, however almost, wide the tire almost, is, yeah. or almost, yeah. And But but how, how long does it extend? Because I, I can't imagine, it could be like something like this, but it could also be like well, this, I have no it, idea. It is like about 10 centimeters, something like that, you know? Yeah. It's not is, very, is, is it, but it is yeah. dynamic. Yeah. Oh, so it's dynamic, you, okay. If you so. go down, well, it, you have to make, uh, first of all, you have to understand that you have the tire modeling of the physics, and then you have the contact points. Yeah. Those things, I have so many people in the community make some confusion about it, like, you know, that sim has this kind of brass, the other one has this kind of other thing, uh, but they are two different things. You need the contact points to understand where the tire is touching and what is touching, mm -hmm. yeah. okay? But then you get what is touching and then you start calculating the actual physics. Go on, Great. go on, so, sorry. So you, you, you have the contact points, but once you know where the contact, what the contact point is touching, then the actual physics of the tire model goes in. Yeah. And then it calculates all the forces, all the, uh, the initial the movements, the uh, rotating, everything, the speeds, yeah. everything. That is a different thing. Yeah. So the, the, the contact point, it's not the actual contact parts, yeah. because even with the old tire model, we have one contact point, but the contact parts of the physics was as big as yeah. the tire. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But the problem was that in the end, to calculate the collisions with the ground, we had just one point. Yeah. Yeah. After that point uh, would tell us that, you know what, you are on a flat surface. Yeah. Right. Now, we are going to calculate the whole contact patch. Yeah and apply all the physics, and the torsion, and the elasticity, yeah. and everything. Yeah, right. That's a different thing. Yeah. So the, 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 the famous, you know, five points contact tire model, yeah. it's not that it changes the uh, underneath uh, the physics of the tire model. Yeah. yeah we yeah. did no, improvements, no, no. but that's yeah, a different yeah. thing. What it gives us now is a better uh, indication of what the, the, the tire is touching. Yeah. Because before we had problems with that. Yeah, so that's that's the difference, the main difference. So of course, yeah, that, that was basically causing uh, like harsh jumps when you get onto a curb, yeah. and you got a lot of power onto yeah. the spikes. Yeah, spikes yeah and, and then forces. that would set everything up and screw it up, and yeah. then you would go into a spin. Yeah, or it would you know go into a some kind of a rail and stay yeah. there. Yeah, and it would get yeah. Out. That, that was more of a problem that was then apparent in, in ACC with a flexible uh, with the sideways flex yes. of the tire, exactly. right? It wasn't as apparent in AC exactly. before. It's, it's, yeah, you know, that's another surprise that often happens. Sometimes you understand it beforehand, sometimes it develops and you are in, in a situation that you didn't want to be there. Yeah. And so you try to improve something, and we improved the tire model with three-dimensional three flex, yeah. and yeah. dampening and everything, which is also dynamic from the heat, from the pressure and everything. Yeah. And then the single point make a mess of it. From it. Yeah. So in order, if, if we wanted to calculate how many like physics update steps we would yeah. theoretically need to cover every piece of asphalt at once. Um, so we can't really do that since it depends also on sort of, I guess, like with more downforce, the patch grows a little in, in its yeah, length, it, basically, it's because it's there's more pressure. Whatever on the load, yeah. it should grow yeah, a yeah, bit. So, okay, but, yeah. but it's not linear. I yeah. mean, there is to a point that... Uh, I then, mean, of course, the tire won't deform linearly, right? Exactly. And also, you arrive at a point, and that is simulated, that uh, when you have lots of forces, from downforce, for example, uh, you arrive at a point that uh, more load will even probably shrink the, the contact patch no. because it deforms so much the tire that ah, you okay. don't get the contact patch growing, but it's, it shrinks. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I it's, see. It's pretty, for example, um, uh, Lamborghini racing team, uh, it was explaining to me that uh, you could practically put the rear wing at 20 degrees angle. It goes up to 20. Right? Yeah. And they made their measurements and they saw that after 18, 
it's not like the wing the wing aerodynamically stalls. It keeps and gives more downforce. Yeah. But the tire can't handle anymore oh. and you gain nothing. Actually you lose yeah. a little bit of grip. Oh okay. So yeah. at 20 degrees of wing you never yeah. use it, but if you wanted to use it, uh, you just gain drag and not enough and not more grip yeah. because yeah. the tire flexes so much that the contour parts becomes worse. Yeah, uh, right. Okay, so thank you very much for, for this in-depth explanation on the new uh, tire model or tire me patch. When it's no, it's, it's, it's I think it's super <laughs> interesting. Actually, I would if I were a viewer of this, I would want you to talk as, as long as possible. Uh, right. So, uh, well, what's next in terms of physics for ACC? Uh, right. So, uh, what we almost finished right now and waits for the 1.08 uh, update. Yeah. Uh, we have redone the pressures in the setup. Uh -huh. and how they work. The actual physics of the pressures is not done from scratch because it works pretty well, yeah. but the automatic uh, thing that we needed uh, and we created for the, for the setup, uh, it, it was, it's not working from yeah. as we wanted. Yeah. Uh, it's, not, it's confusing, uh -huh. uh, it, it doesn't make you understand what you're doing. Uh, we wanted to create a semi-automatic thing to help people, but we fucked okay. up. Mainly. Okay. <laughs> so, so what we did now is that we rewrite that stuff, and now it works like, I mean, imagine yourself that you have a normal tire and you have a pressure gun, you know, mid measurement, yeah. and you just go there and put air in it. You don't care what temperature the, the tire yeah. is in, if it's yeah. from the blankets or if it's cold. You yeah. just go there and put pressure in. Yeah. So you decide for 60, uh, sorry, uh, 26 psi. Yeah. You put just 26, and that's it. Yeah. So you okay. go back on the truck, and if you have the uh, blankets, you will find 26 psi, and that's yeah. it. And if the temperature, outside temperature changes, that doesn't influence anymore the pressure, because you know that when you put the tire on the car, it's right outside from the blankets, so it has 65 uh, degrees Celsius, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. So you don't have any more to calculate if the weather is hot or if it's cold. You just put your pressure in, yeah. and you know, if it's gonna go up, you need two PSI, for example, less uh, yeah. than the hot that you want to be. So if you want 28 PSI hot yeah. tire, yeah. you're gonna put in 26. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But if the temperature goes down, then you have to think yeah. about that. Okay. But that's yeah. it. It's, so it's a bit more manual it's, then? Yeah, yeah. It, actually not. It's, but it's straightforward. Uh, it's easier to to try and, and you know yeah. trial and error instead of explaining. Yeah. yeah. It sounds more complicated but in the end you yeah. just you know put the pressure and go. Alright, alright. So but is it is it mostly a, a, a UI change or is it also mainly specific? yes. Okay. Mainly yes. Okay, mainly all right. Yes. Because the pressure is yeah is working pretty well. Yeah. So uh, then the other two physics topics that I have on my on my uh, cheat sheet here would be uh, well collision physics is there um, anything right now no okay we want to finish some you know stability and optimization of the whole after yeah. afterwards personally I would really like to go back to the damage and how it's created because right, right now it's very basic it's come it comes from a set of course one yeah. it has issues I'm not happy about it I think nobody's happy about it yeah and it would be nice once we have a stable platform to go there and yeah. make I'm not saying you know completely revolutionize nice, but make it a little bit more yeah. logical, you know. Yeah, it would. I mean, it, for me personally, it would be nice to have something like have the cars when they touch each other behave like you know it from the TV, yeah. basically. That would be that would be nice. And right now, it's more like a, it's a bit clunky when you when you yeah. get into each other. It just but it's yeah. You know, it in feels multiplayer, a little you always yeah. have the limitations of yeah, the dead core and pings and latency yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So you can only arrive up to a point before starting yeah. to adding, you know, fake things yeah. like uh, ghost stability yeah. and stuff like that that we don't do. All right. But I know that other arcade games, for example, when you touch with one another, they instantly uh, make yeah. the stability control go up. Yeah. And yeah. it usually is a magic hand that keeps you on the road. Yeah. This is something that is not, you know, inside the code of the process, so it will never happen. Uh, so yeah, in multiplayer you have limits from, from the technology. Yeah. Uh, in single player, possibly we can improve. Yeah, yeah, that would be very nice. So um, then, one, one topic that we uh, that that was well demanded or asked for it back a couple of years ago when we were still with Assetto Corsa, the first one, 
um, was a chassis flex, and yeah. that's something that where the the rationale behind that that you guys gave the community was why it's not in the set of Corsa was that. Um, you don't have good data on it, no. um, and there were so many different cars in the set of Corsa. Now, why I'm asking this about ACC is, you have one class of cars more or less um, in the game. So now it seems like not as far of a reach to get like some chassis flex I mean, simulation. Okay, in sorry, it. sorry to interrupt you. So those guys that while we're doing serious work, those guys, we need to drive. Those guys, <laughs> we need to drive. Come right. on, we need to make a There's, race on the road. Like there, it's a wild game of us over here. A wild. <laughs> Oh yeah, how's it going? Right. How you doing, man? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. But, but you're in luck, we're almost out of battery. Oh, so, <laughs> so it's already here. Uh, give us 30 seconds to finish up. All right. So how can we do serious work with those guys? That's, I mean, it's that's impossible. A, yeah, that's a very good question. Okay, I, I hadn't actually noticed. I wasn't looking at it, but you were distracted. Okay. All right, so, okay. Uh, Sasha's flex. Very quickly. Is yeah. it coming? No. Okay. I'll tell you why. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay, battery right. died, but we're well, back on. Back. This one is dead. The one in there okay. is full. Okay, Aris, so, chassis flex not coming to ACC, no. and here's why. Yeah, the chassis flex is not one number. Yeah. Okay. You have chassis flex in torsion of the chassis. You have uh, various degrees of torsion. Yeah. And then you have chassis flex on the attack points of the suspension. Who knows that? Not even probably the manufacturer, maybe maybe yes, maybe not. Yeah. And then you have sassis flex on the actual arms. It's not sassis, it's yeah. the arms flexing. Yeah. Who knows that? All right. Nobody. Well, so, I could borrow a car and then just put it yeah. on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> so there are so many numbers yeah. that we don't know how they work. And then we also have another issue. Uh, sassis flex and all that various sassis flex is vibration stiffness, uh -huh. okay? And they are high uh, frequency. And on the sims, you have generally relatively low frequency. Not very low on the sims, but you know, not enough yeah. to have also this. So you're risking to have lots of oscillations that you cannot control specifically. Yeah. And then the end result might not be well. Or you end up doing just a very basic sausage flex just for the marketing yeah. or something like that that you don't know really if that's the, po the right, case right. or not. Yeah. Honestly, we don't have the proper data yeah. and uh, we have many other things that we would like to improve like aerodynamics and stuff like that. Uh, we managed to improve the tire model so we're not yet even considering going into the sausage flex. Yeah. All right. That's All right. Thanks a lot. Right, uh, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll cut it short here. We're, we gotta go, the other guys are already waiting for us. So, say goodbye to Aris, Aris say goodbye to YouTube. <laughs> All right, so yeah, thanks very much for watching and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.